Well, good morning to you all and a warm welcome to TBC Virtual Church. Over the past six weeks, we've been looking at the Sermon on the Mount, found in Matthew chapters 5, 6 and 7. Our theme has been life under the new covenant. And our approach has been to observe the renewal and the transformation that Jesus brought and, of course, still brings to everything. But first, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you transform all things. And we pray that as we delve into your word this morning, your Holy Spirit will transform each one of us afresh. For we ask it in your name. Amen. So beginning on week one of our series, and remembering the covenant of God with Adam, and then with Abraham, and further along the line in the Old Testament with Moses and with David, we considered the radical new covenant revealed by Jesus under our title for the week, week one, of a renewed deal. We moved on in week two to refresh ourselves and to draw strength from the thought that in Jesus we are renewed people. Week three saw us grappling with the idea of a renewed morality, flowing directly from the renewed covenant and the fact that we are a renewed people in Jesus. Now the practical outworking of this new morality was then explored in week four under the title Renewed Justice. As the new covenant in Jesus focuses on relationship rather than law and ritual, week five brought our thoughts to renewed God conversations. And week six followed with renewed priorities. Today is week seven, and we conclude our series under the title Renewed Foundations. Seven weeks ago, I addressed you, good folk, at TBC as we concluded another series a series on the letters of John, the three letters that John wrote. And the title for that talk is not a million miles from the title of this talk, or rather the theme of it isn't. The title for that thought talk was Staying Faithful. And although the main text of John's third letter helped us to consider that thought, I also referred to the story told by Jesus, recorded in Matthew 7, of the wise and foolish builders. Now the title today, as I have already mentioned, is Renewed foundations. But in essence, the message is the same 
as the message staying faithful. Continued faithfulness depends on a firm foundation. And whereas the foundation for the Old Covenant required adherence to the law, the Renewed Covenant is based on the foundation of relationship with Father God through Jesus. He is the solid rock on which to build the rest of our lives. Jesus is our renewed foundation. He helps us to see and to understand things from God's perspective. And as we've learned over these past six weeks, that's challenging. But it is really exciting too. So we're going to read now verses 24 to 29 of Matthew 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down and the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. So we've started at the end of the chapter. And in a way, not only is that the conclusion of the chapter, it's the conclusion of this sermon. Um, but I'm not quite finished yet. I'm going to make a few other observations on the way. But it is clear in these last few verses that there's only one foundation. Jesus. But sticking with the building analogy, this passage contains some useful, what we might call building blocks along the way. And I'm going to suggest three this morning. So they are understanding that God loves everybody, not just believers. Understanding the importance of maintaining those God conversations. And thirdly, understanding the danger of being led astray. So we're going to read some more verses from chapter 7, some selected verses. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own eye. You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. 
For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. Watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but are inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognise them. Do people pick grapes from a thorn bush, or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognise them. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. So, understanding that God loves everybody, not just believers. And this really is a key point, because in a sense, many other things flow from this. As followers of Jesus, we are privileged. We're privileged because we know God loves us. And he's clearly demonstrated that love to us in the life in the death and in the resurrection of Jesus. We understand we are part of his family. John writes in that beautiful gospel of his in the first chapter, he writes, to those who believed in his name, the name of Jesus. He gave the right to become children of God. And then in chapter 3 of his first letter, John seems overwhelmed by this truth that we are children of God. When he writes... See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. Or some of the older translations put it, uh, Behold, what manner of love is this, that we should be called children of God? And, and then it goes on to add, but that is what we are. What a privilege. But the danger is, because of this privilege, we might become proud, thinking we are something special. And then we may begin to pass almost without realising it, judgment on others. We are special, you are not. 
and we need to take great care. Here, Jesus clearly instructs, do not judge. And he uses humour and irony, contrasting sawdust and specks in the eyes of the judged, with planks in the eyes of those who pass judgment. To underline his point, who said God has no sense of humour? But how true it is that the faults we are quick to spot in others are often those faults that we are guilty of too. I suppose um, the old saying is, is true, isn't it? It takes one to know one. You know, judgment is none of our business, nor is it our responsibility. Judgment is the business and the responsibility of God. Our responsibility is to get along with others as much as is possible from our side. So we read Jesus' summary in verse 12, echoing the royal law. In everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. As renewed people of God, as his children, we are to love what he loves, including all those not yet in his family. God loves everybody. And then maintain God conversations. This topic, topic was, was covered by Pete in week five, so I don't need to repeat it, really. But it's worth reminding ourselves that conversation is how we build relationship. Any relationship. Conversation. Conversation with God builds a relationship with God. Not talking at God, but talking with God. Talking and listening. Listening and talking. We read, for everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. We receive. By listening. We find by listening. We discover open doors by listening. And what a lovely verse this is. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him. I don't think I need to say any more. Jesus speaks more clearly than any of us ever can. And finally we move to the danger of being led astray. I like walking and it can be easy when walking a new Root to lose a narrow path. And sometimes, even though the route is on the map or on your phone, 
it looks very vague in reality on the ground. And you find yourself going in the wrong direction. Earlier on, we noted that we're not to judge others. But there is a time to exercise wisdom and discernment. So Jesus warns us about false prophets and the dangers of their teaching, which can so e easily lead us astray down the wrong path. But he not only warns, he gives us other advice too. Using the illustration of fruit trees and the fruit they bear, he gives very straightforward advice. Watch out for false prophets. <clears throat> they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit, you will recognise them. And Paul builds on this picture in his letter to the Galatians and he clarifies the sort of fruit we might expect to see in the true people of God. And that includes us, of course. He says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control against such things there is no law so jesus not only gives us a warning but he guides us how to discern truth from falsehood pretense from reality helping to protect us from wrong teaching. And verses 21 to 23 bring some very sober reading and sober thoughts. Not everybody, says Jesus, who calls me Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of the Father. So, as we draw to a conclusion, and thinking of the title of this particular session, Renewed Foundations. I say again that there's only one true foundation, the rock that is Jesus. All other things are helps or supports building blocks. And we've looked at three such helps, but there are others. On the secure base that Jesus the Rock offers, we can move to his will. This isn't about striving and straining and getting stressed. It's simply about obedience to what he says. And it encompasses much of what we've learned through this series. Under the renewed covenant or renewed deal, as we have called it, as renewed people 
we recognize a renewed morality. We practice renewed justice. We enjoy renewed God conversations. We adopt renewed priorities because we stand on a renewed foundation. And I'm going to read again in closing those end verses of Matthew 7. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, says Jesus, and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that Jesus teaches with authority. And we pray that we may be those who hear his words and do his will, building on him who is the foundation as he transforms our lives to be pleasing to you and helpful to others. Amen. Thank you for joining with us today. We look forward to that time when we'll be able to meet together in person. Have a good day.